Meet the family of Dr. Ruben Quintero. Every one of these children owes their life to a remarkable surgical technique pioneered by Dr. Quintero and carried out while they were still in their mother's womb. More than 50 families have flown here to Tampa, Florida from all over the US for this remarkable reunion. Brought together by a potentially fatal complication which affects identical twins. Basically, this is a very large support group for all of those patients that have been diagnosed and they come to the internet or they get on the phone and contact a patient that, have been, that has been through a similar situation so they can understand the process, what to expect uh, and how things will eventually possibly turn out. In all pregnancies, the placenta is the blood link between mother and child, carrying nutrients in and waste out. But in the case of identical twins, it's a little more complex. Each twin has a segment of the placenta for itself, as well as shared areas from which they both derive nutrients and oxygen. Not only that, but the twins are interconnected through the placenta via blood vessels. Usually the exchange of blood between the two is even, but in one in 10 cases of identical twins, it's not equal. A condition known as twin-twin transfusion syndrome. Without treatment, these pregnancies usually end in death for one or both of the twins, depending on the syndrome's severity. That was the prospect facing Tanya Earing and her husband, Mike. We thought we were in the clear, and then when he told us we definitely had it, kind of felt like a hopeless feeling, and it was, it was hard. By any standards, the Earring's little girls are extraordinary. Naturally conceived triplets are very rare, just one in every 10,000 births. But on top of that, two of the babies were identical and had the syndrome. Mike's a senior pediatrics resident, so he knew better than most the risks involved. I knew it was horrible. I tried to play it down at first because I didn't want to totally let her know exactly how bad it was. The literature shows that this is a really bad thing. Um, so I was really crushed, just devastated. This is where the problem lies, the placenta. Through an endoscope, we can see the blood vessels which run between the two babies. Problems occur if there are more or bigger vessels going in one direction than the other, resulting in one baby having too much blood, the other too little. Amniotic fluid consists largely of urine, the baby receiving too much blood starts to overproduce it. The other twin's kidneys shut down to compensate. This means its amniotic sac becomes dry. If nothing is done, the pregnancy is lost either because the fetuses cannot tolerate the situation or because there is such an excessive accumulation of fluid in the sac of the recipient twin that the mother goes into a preterm labor and miscarries. In less severe cases, the condition can be treated by draining away excess fluid from the sac of the twin who receives the most blood. But there is only one way to treat the underlying cause. The vessels responsible for the unequal exchange of blood have to be identified and sealed off. Once done, each twin will be a separate entity. Dr. Quintero carries out the whole procedure through a small incision. This is uh, quite murky because of the previous bleeding. Hmm? Yeah. Today he's dealing with an emergency case. A woman admitted with severe twin-twin transfusion syndrome. It doesn't look quite clean because of the blood, but we'll get it. The first step is to look at the placenta to identify the vessels between the twins, which are responsible for the unequal blood exchange. So, so far, four communications. But we haven't assessed the placenta completely. We just have to work our way. We're just going little by little. Once they've been identified, the blood vessels can be sealed with the laser. The laser light is delivered down a fine fiber. The tip here is just 0.6 millimeters across. A visible red laser is used to aim the beam, then a pulse of invisible laser light heats and seals the blood vessel. We have found every vessel that allows these fetuses to exchange blood and occluded them. 
now it's up to how much placenta each of these babies has. The next 24 hours are critical because um, we're going to do an ultrasound tomorrow and find out if they are alive or not. The following morning, an ultrasound scan reveals that one of the twins has died since the procedure. It's an outcome that Dr. Quintero deals with often, as both twins will only survive if they each have enough placenta. A twin that dies is reabsorbed and won't affect the chances of the other twin surviving. We always ask uh, ourselves this question, was there anything that, could have, that I could have done differently in this particular case to alter the outcome? And the answer is no. The answer is we would have done exactly the same surgery again and the outcome would have been the same. Sadly, the second twin died the following week. After their surgery, Tanya's triplets, Madison, Kylie and Taylor, were born slightly premature. One of the twins was a little bigger, and still is, but they are all in good health. It's hard, because I think back and think, we could have had none, we could have had one. And then I look at them now, and you would never know that how healthy they are and how happy. And I, now I look back, I would never do anything different. Monkey's all over the place. The number of people at the reunion is testimony to the success of the technique and the debt of gratitude the parents feel towards Dr. Quintero and his team. Many of them found a special way to say thank you. Many of them have uh, either my name or uh, my first name or even my modified last name. I just feel very proud, really, to have been able to help each and every one of them come to life. Uh, are we happy or Dr. Quintero's family is growing all the time. Oh, look over there, hoping. Children who owe their lives to cutting edge technology and a pioneering surgeon. Yes, yes. We, we go back a long time. 